Welcome back to the channel today. I'm joined by Norbert Novini Jr., one of the top prospects in world mixed martial arts now, who's set to take on Andy Manzola, Bellator 291 in Dublin, uh, this coming Saturday, February 25th. Norbert, thanks so much for taking the time to join me today. A few little hitches with the old uh, with our old connection, but we're back in business now again. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I guess, look, at we we tried once and failed with the connection. We're back again. We were talking about your journey towards recovery. Obviously, as a, a young up-and-coming guy in the middleweight division in Bellator, five wins, four finishes, but we haven't seen you for two and a half years. You're been recovering from, uh, from ACL surgery, obviously, and recovering from that injury. How good does it feel to be just on the doorstep of another performance and stepping back into the Bellator cage again. Man, it feels surreal. It does. It, it just doesn't feel real. I mean, I had my last, uh, last part yesterday. So Saturday, and, uh, I just really wanted to get in, but I was so nervous. I was like, please, like God, please let me get through with any injuries and stuff like that. And, uh, man, I'm here tomorrow's fight week. <laughs> it just, yeah, it's feels surreal. Feels surreal. Um, describe, you know, some of the journey that you've had to take. Obviously, when you're dealing with a, a big injury like that, it's a big physical, obviously, struggle to get back to where you need to be. But it's also a very big mental struggle as well. It's like, you know, you feel that all the progress that you've been making, all the hard work that you had been doing right up until the injury kind of just gets snatched away from you in some regards. Um, how was that dealing with the report that that process, the, the 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 mental side of the injury, and coming back and getting yourself back into fighting condition again? So even before the fight, it was uh, again to me a little bit because I had a year out already due to COVID. Um, I couldn't travel to st uh, to the states because of uh, my expired visa, and everything was backlogged uh, in the embassy, so I couldn't get that done and. Bato couldn't come to Europe and it was all a mess. And then finally I had a fight and then the injury happened. And, um, you know, it was, I said it before, um, it was a personal battle. It was a, it was a, it was a fight. Usually all the negative stuff that happens in life, they're usually external, a lot of it is external factors. But the whole time, even once I was good and I was back to training, it was still a bit of a battle for me with myself. Um, but I learned a lot about myself as a fighter and as a man. And to be able to do that 23, I think it's very rare. And I've had worse stuff. I've so many more worse stuff in my life than, than an ACL injury. Like I'm just looking at it objectively, like, realistically. But none of them were such personal fights as this one was. This was, in that way, this was the hardest one, you know. Yeah. It will, you can't compare it to a war and can't compare it to poverty and you can't, you know, those kind of stuff. But this one was such a personal, it was literally a, uh, me versus me because can I stay in there? Am I going to be as motivated? Can I do 10 hours a day uh, even when I, have a, I don't have a fight, even when I can't walk? Can I do that? Can I do two, three sessions a day like that? And uh, yeah, I just had to push through it. No holidays, you know, no Food, no going to restaurants and stuff like that. You staying in shape. Yeah, indeed, it must have been quite the journey for you. You said that you have had dealt with some some other grievances in your life. Do you care to kind of share what some of those may have been? Um, well, a lot. Like all my childhood, I was, well, a lot, of, a lot of my years I spent in hospitals. Then uh, it's not really known anywhere I've been hungry. So my dad. He got involved with something that still there's no evidence against him, you know. Uh, basically, something happened with a company where my dad was uh, my dad was a, a marketing face, and uh, he got involved through that. But there's still no evidence against him. It's just a very corrupt system. It's Eastern Europe, like kind of it's a it's a different world over there. Uh, but obviously, he never, you know, he had he had issues because of that. Um, my the fact that even when I was a kid and my parents split up, it was all over the news. Um, then my mom got into a, a relationship with a guy who was very abusive. Uh, she had to literally run away from Hungary to England. That's how I got out to England as well. 
And I had to, you know, I, I, I'm an immigrant, so I had to do that lifestyle as well for quite a bit of time. Um, you know, and these are, like, I could, there's so much stuff I can go into. But, you know, deep, like, I, as a kid growing up, you know, I had my little brother and sister, and I was there from the age of 11, 10. I was their father, or like, my role model since I was 20 until my mom remarried. So, so literally, I was from from 10 till 15, 16 hours with my little brother and sister all the time, you know, looking after them. And and just that, that that's not a bad bug, but these are just little things that, like, I could go into even more stuff, but I had a lot of stuff in my life. And none of them, everything was external factors. Also, I was a kid, like, it never really affected me the same way, you know. It's like when my mom had bad days, you know, I'll be like, you know what, I'll take the heat from her so my little brother and sister don't get it. Just, just those kind of stuff, like that kind of stuff. But none of it was personal. Whereas this one, this this knee was very different. It was a very personal battle. It was yeah. very personal. It sounds and like as I, yep, sorry. It, it, no, it's all good. Sorry. It sounded to me like you've had to grow up very quickly in your younger life with everything yeah. that had been going on. All of those things kind of manifested your mentality to be able to deal with such a stumbling block like hurting your ACL and being out for a prolonged period of time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that was the main difference was that it, that was just like, all right, life, life is this, just go through, you know, just keep doing what you do. And when you make it, when you become a world champion, that's because I've, I've been wanting to be a MMA world champion since I was a little kid. So while all that bad stuff was happening, you know, I still had the same dream. But then imagine that dream helped me get through a lot of stuff in life and motivated me through everything. And now that dream might be, you know, I've said it this before. Um, a lot of people were very negative around me, but it didn't, didn't mean to be negative. But there was like even my dad, who was, who was a fighter himself, he's like, when he heard I've got my ACL tear, he just started panicking about it. You know, I had people telling me that oh, they always they stopped sports because of that. And, uh, they told me that oh, I started to like literally had people coming to me like, oh, now at least you have time to uh, do something else, not just fighting. You know, like pick up, pick up a new skill. And to me, it was like, is that the end of my dream or is it a journey? Because I thought it was. Is it actually that bad? You know. Yeah. And then I realized it's not that bad. It takes a long time and it's very painful, but it's not the end of the world. You know. I just needed my coach to to guide me through it. That was that was the key to to be honest with you. My coach and my my determination. Yeah, that's crazy, man. I can't even imagine, you know, with everything else that's gone on. And plus on top of that, with, you know, kind of getting your career halted as well, when you're kind of riding on the crest of a wave within the middleweight division and, and being highly spoken of. You know, you mentioned your dad a couple of times. Obviously, he's been a, an athlete for the majority of his life, his Olympic level wrestler. How much of an influence was was that on your decision and wanting to become a fighter? I mean... I think it's in my blood. I truly believe I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a fourth or fifth generational fighter. So even my, my granddad got qualified for Olympics and then on the way to the Olympics on the, at the airport, they turned him away because obviously it was, a, uh, it was, a, back then it was a communist part, part a communist country, Hungary, and he didn't really agree with the, their views and stuff like that. So, and he's a father as well. So everyone's been a, been a fighter in my, my family. So I truly believe this is, this is in my blood. Um, but you know, he got me into the sport, and uh, that was it. But the the one thing you know, he always said, just do what you love and and try as many things as possible. Um, and then for some reason, I just fell in love with this sport, and that's why even when I was a kid, before I was doing it, I was always into heroes and and Achilles and Hercules and Thesis, and these are the people I grew up on. So uh, I I always play with swords and, and even before I could fight and I started fighting. So I truly believe it's just in me, it's, it's within my, within my blood. Yeah. That's great to hear. Are you, you know, you mentioned, obviously you had to move over from Hungary. Are, are you proud of your Hungarian re heritage and, and representing Hungary? And, uh, you know, obviously UK is your home right now and you've made a life for yourself there as well. Uh, how do you feel about all of that? It's a hard one. You know, I don't look at it like that. You know, I don't look at oh, this country and that country because people will hate you everywhere and people will love you everywhere. Do you get what I mean? So um, I grew up in, I truly believe that I grew up in the UK. You know, my hardest moments in life have 
been in the UK and uh, my, all my best friends and all my friends are in the UK. Um, I'm I'm proud to be Hungarian. You know, we're like it's a nation that has a, a lot of history and and a lot of great people. But at the same time, we do have a you know bad things as well. Uh, and I also love being English in a way. You know, I grew up here. I've, I've I embrace this culture and uh, and I love the people here. So to to me, it's not even about country or this and that anymore. You know. To me, it's whoever whoever is near me and around me, you know, uh, I just want them, I want their appraisal and then I want them to be happy with me. And I know that the people around me are pretty solid people and as long as they are happy, I'm happy. But otherwise, I don't care about anything like that, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's completely fair. Um, back to fighting, obviously, and, and in that recovery process, you're getting yourself all set up. It, you know, you'd mentioned to me kind of uh, previously the influence of your coach and how he kind of kept you in track and, and made sure that you didn't push yourself too much. Obviously, with such a bad knee injury, you have to find that fine balance in, in the kind of workload that you're putting on yourself, the amount of training, because I'm sure, I'm sure that you had the mentality going in there that you wanted to just pick up where you left off. But it's not that's not the reality of the situation that you were dealing with. Yeah, so like uh, again, like I said before, um, my my uh, friend's dad did my knee, and he's uh, he's one of the best surgeons in the country. And he was like, "Listen, mate, you know, it's going to be nine months. I don't want you to come back before nine months." And I was speaking to one physio said that oh, I know someone who came back in like six months, uh, but everyone was like, "Listen, six to nine months. Try to keep it there. The longer you wait, the better." And apart from, and so everyone was saying that to me, even my dad was like, you know what, even wait, don't get back to training. My dad was like, he was like, just wait until nine, even a year. And then you rather wait that time and then go back to training, then mess it up again. And then like three months, my coach goes like, what are you doing? And they're idiots back to like, idiots back training by this time. Like, what are you doing? My coach is obviously trying to get me to work a little bit more. But like I said before, he's, you know, he was just paying so much attention to me. So anytime I did something, he was like, what are you doing? Stop that. Don't do that. Or I'll go back to sparring at four months. And uh, he was watching me like this every time I sparred. And as soon as he saw me get a little bit tired, he pulled me out. He was like, that's it for you today. Because he didn't want to, he wanted to make sure that I'm not going to rehurt myself. I can keep control of it. But without him, I wouldn't have been back so, so quickly. Yeah. So I can... Yeah, I, I, but he's, you know, he's been through it. He had all the injuries and surgeries, you can imagine. So, and he's, he's, a, he's a genius. Anyone who knows Alexis Dimitriadis, um, uh, in the MMA world, you know, he's been around for, for years and uh, he really is an OG when it comes to the sport. And yeah, he's a genius. He, we call him a mad scientist. He's like a mad scientist. Yeah, and I'm sure, like, on top of, like, guiding you through that injury, he's been a massive influence on the progression of your mixed martial arts career as well, Norbert. Yeah, 100%. As in, like, as, like I said, my dad was, I'm an immigrant, so I came here with my mom and my dad was in Hungary. And even though I kept a very good relationship with my dad, and to this day I speak to him every day, you know, I don't really see him. Sometimes I didn't see him for two, three years. So I, my father figures were my, my coaches, Paul Ivan and Alexis Dimitriadis. So uh, they, they definitely had a massive influence on me um, when it comes to, when it comes to um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they had a massive influence on me when it comes to my personality, my work ethic, my fighting skills, uh, my education, everything. Um, uh, and yeah, I'll be just blessed that even even when my dad couldn't be around me as much as you know I would have loved to have him around me, you know I had other great men to guide me through my journey, and luckily they still there and guided me through my journey. Hundred percent, and and you know what? It's been a very exciting journey so far, and you know you talked about the vibe in the in London shoe fighters and and you know getting kind of that Jamaican culture in the gym as well as you can be seen on your YouTube uh, vlog series that uh, you're doing ahead of the fight as well you know uh, um, talk to me about the whole vibe in the gym right now Norbert 
obviously everyone's really excited for my comeback, but everyone's got big fights, you know. Uh, John Hathaway's fighting in Octagon, then uh, uh, the uh, the Michael Payne is fighting uh, Goiti Yamauchi on the same night. Uh, Nathan Rose, who used to be in Bellator, he's fighting a local UK show for a title, and these are just within the next two, three weeks, you know. Yeah. And after that, we got we got loads of boxing fights, loads of MMA fights, you know. Um, and so it's always within the gym. It's always love, and it's always everyone. Everyone, you know, we, we're a big family. But at the same time, it's always work, and and you know, it's all like the coaches have a mentality that that come, you know, that can be seen in the gym. You know, everyone's there and everyone's ready, ready to work and they're ready to kill. So uh, there's the vibe in the gym. Everyone's, it's always fun and music is blasting and always, everyone's always having fun, but at the same time, it's always work. Yeah, 100%. You mentioned John Hathaway there and his story itself has been very inspirational and he's had to come back from a hell of a lot as well. You know, you looking from the outside in at his journey and where he's got, and obviously he's coming back into Octagon and competing in, in a couple of weeks' time as well. You know, that must have inspired you that, you know, all is not lost after the injury and stuff like that as well, I can imagine. Yeah, I mean, that's why I said, like, I'm not even allowed to cry about my knee. I mean, that guy, he's, you know, he was, everyone said that he was going to be the next big thing, Right. And he was going through everyone. Obviously, he made that made a little mistake in one fight uh, against. Uh, well, I think it was in China. I think maybe the main event there. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Uh, but against the the Korean kid, I forgot his name. And um, he, like you know, other than that, he's just he was going through everyone, you know. And he was supposed to fight Gunnar Nelson, and obviously his uh, his stomach issues happened, and uh, he had to stop fighting. Unfortunately, I mean that must have been like you know heartbreaking. I can't even imagine imagine that. And uh, you know he he's and he's back now. How amazing is that? After eight years, and he had to fight and he just dominated a guy, like perfectly beat a guy up. So Johnny. And, you know, he's such a nice guy. He's the loveliest guy. He's always smiling, you know, also very well educated. He's, you know, he's a, he's a great man to be around. Great man to be around. I just wish, I wish I could have spent more time around him when I was younger. That's all. Because that's when, when, I, when I moved, well, not when I moved to the UK, but when I started training with the pros, that's when uh, a lot of his uh, issues started happening. So I couldn't see him as much. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's great, I guess, right now where, you know, you're, two of you guys are at different stages of your career as well. Obviously, you're kind of up and going. He's been around, obviously. It's kind of like a fresh start for him as well. So even though you didn't get that time back then, at least you're getting the time. I'm sure you're sharing some sessions and, and going through the motions with John right now. So it must be it must be good. The two of you are kind of on the comeback trail. Um, I, I was just talking to you as well uh, it, previously, about you know the setting that you've created for yourself for your comeback you're going over to a packed house in the three arena you know you've experienced that before uh you experienced fighting in front of the irish fans you know it's a great setting to come back for and uh you know it, it's going to be a worthy kind of scene for your comeback are you excited to get back there at belt or 291 fighting in front of packed three arena as well um uh, yeah i can't wait like we had this conversation before when I fought Will Fleury, um, that was an amazing moment. The probably one of the best moments in my life, if not the best. I walked out, ten thousand people booing me, and by the end, everyone was cheering. And like I said before, I really like this video. I've, I've got a video of a guy going, "Norbert, we thought you were a fucking cunt, but you want us over, and we're now fans." And that's one of my favorite videos of all time. <laughs> so. Uh, so, so is is a great crowd and and I love it. Yeah, it's brilliant. Like that's just a classic uh, case of, of what an Irish fan is. You know, we'll always support yeah. our own, but we'll always respect good competitors. And you know, you've got that respect, yeah. and rightly so as well. So you know, you're back there again. Andy Manzolo is the guy you're going to be facing off with. An experienced guy, 35 fights. You know, looking at it on paper, people might say, "Holy my goodness, there's a, a massive experience disadvantage here for you." You don't see it that way, obviously. You've accepted the fight. You're happy to get in there and, and, and take on somebody like Andy. What kind of problems do you see him possess uh, him that he may possess for you or, or, or vice versa in the fight? 
Uh, listen, man, he's you know he's he's got a lot of experience. He's uh just his MMA record is twenty six and nine, and he's he had loads of Muay Thai fights and black belt jits and judo, and you know he's been around. But I just know one thing, and when it comes to everyone that fight, I just know that I'm a workhorse, and I know that I'm outworking everyone. I just can't see him doing more work than me. While everyone else is doing their pad work and their lifting session and this and that, having fun, I'm at the gym doing my live work. I'm there, I'm hurt, getting hurt every single day. I'm getting back at my craft. So, because I do that so much, I just truly believe believe in my skills and in myself. And, you know, he might have experience when it comes to fight, but you know what? I'm, I'm 100% sure I've done more rounds than him, you know? I do. I've, I've I've done tens of thousands of rounds in my life, you know. And it, and I'm young, and I'm you know I would have five pro fights, but people forget that I've I've been fighting since I was a year and a half. You know, I started with karate, then going to kung fu, and and I've been doing MMA and wrestling as in like every single day since I was like nine ten. Yeah. So uh, I've been around, and and I've done my rounds. So I'm I'm pretty confident in myself as well. Don't get me wrong; I haven't fought in a long time. So I'm 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 probably gonna be nervous and I'm excited what it's gonna be like being in that cage again, but uh, I just don't see myself uh, in a disadvantage. Do you believe in ring rust? Ooh, do you know what? It's not the ring rust. I I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know because my last fight that I had a year out then as well because of COVID, and uh, I felt very different going into that fight but I also did not have a crowd and I felt like that was a massive that had a massive impact on me not having a crowd um I do loads of rounds though I'm constantly doing rounds so it's it's a hard question it's a hard question we'll see we'll see in this fight if I go in and I do what I want to do and how I want to do it and I don't rush it and I make sure that I'm precise and I am myself then it should be should be a good day for me. It should be a, a first round KO. So we'll see. If it goes that way, then I won't believe in ring rust at all. Yeah, hundred. <laughs> at the moment, I can't answer that question. <laughs> yeah, at the moment, yeah. I can't answer that question. Well, we'll, uh, we'll I'll ask you that the next time we speak ahead of your next fight and see. You'll probably have Perfect. a better assessment of it as well. I want to talk about you know obviously not to kind of ram on about your injury, but sitting on the sidelines and watching everybody progress in the middleweight rankings in Bellator, how did that sit with you? You know, do you feel that without that two year, two and a half year layoff that you would be a ranked Bellator middleweight at this stage of your career? Well, I was already ranked. You're I was number ranked. nine and I was, yeah, I was number nine uh, at the time of my injury. Right. And uh, I was supposed to fight the number five Charlie Ward. Mm-hmm. And my dream was to be a world champion by the time I'm 23, beat John Jones's record. Um, could have gone that way, maybe. You know, I've I've got I'm quite um, I don't even know how to put it. Uh, I'm quite unpredictable in a way that all I need is one moment of. I only need to be perfect one one moment, and I can get a win. So you know, I could have I I, I would have had a chance maybe to fight for you know to to win a title. But at the same time. Realistically, would I have been able to, at that stage of my life, at two and a half years ago, deal with Gegard Mousasi as well as I think I would deal with him, as, as I would deal with now? Yeah. Maybe not. You know, you have to be realistic with this. So, um, and now, now, just I don't know. I've just improved so much, even though I haven't, I haven't fought, and you know, and and I had like a couple months out. I just I have improved so much. It's actually crazy. It's actually crazy. Yeah, because like I mean, two and a half years is a long, long time. So obviously you're going to be putting the work in and and, and making levels up and 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 skill upskilling in your kind of game as well. When you're looking ahead to the next year or two, what path do you think you're going to follow? Are you eager right now obviously you said you wanted to beat john jones's record and become the young youngest world champion at, at the age of 23 that's out of the question now obviously enough do you want to yeah. rush your way into the rankings again are you happy to kind of maybe take a couple of fights this year and ease yourself back into it what what kind of do you see your path being over the next couple of years 
Yeah, so in my opinion, well, I think what would be the most ideal is I have this fight, crank him, you know, I, I, you know, I, I sleep him in the third. Then I have another fight that would set me up with someone in the top 10, you know, not a top 10 guy, but something that will set me up. And then I know the guy as well. And then I'll have that, that before, like this, just like early summer or May even, uh, end of May. And then after that, try to improve as much as I can and maybe have another fight at the, at the end of the year with someone rang and knock them out as well. And uh, after that, we'll see. But that's that's the plan for this year. Nice. It's not a bad plan altogether. Um, are you happy to stay fighting in Europe or would you like to kind of experience a Bellator show on stateside as well? Have you fought, have you fought stateside? I've, I've fought. Oh. Yeah, I fought. I fought stateside, but it just there's only one problem: the tax is a bit too much. You know, you fly over, 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 over the pond, like the tax is a bit higher. So uh, I don't mind fighting Europe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying. You know, I'm trying to give myself get myself a nice house, and nice car, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, you know, I don't want to pay an extra ten percent if I don't have to. Yeah, keep Uncle Sam away from your money. That's that's for sure. That's it. Yeah, you don't want anybody else getting a cut of that. So, Norbert, look at anyone who's tuning in. They can see you next Friday or next Saturday, February twenty fifth. Saturday, yeah. Uh, um, Andy Manzolo is a guy. What can fans expect to see upon your return? I truly believe in a first round knockout. I truly believe in that. But either way, every time I fight, it's always spectacular. It's always fun to watch. I always do big throws, big punches, spins, all that kind of shit. So even my last fight where I I, I was just a bit off and I got hit in the first round, still it was a fun fight, constant work, even though it was just one round, you know? Yeah. So it's when I fight, it's always fun. It's always fun to watch. Absolutely. I can attest to that big time. I'm very excited to see you return. That's why I introduced you at the start of the podcast. I don't believe you're one of the top prospects in the UK or Ireland. I believe you're the top prospect in the world of mixed martial arts. And I'm Thank very you. excited to see your progress up the Bellator rankings. And I hope that this won't be the first time that we'll get the chance to have a conversation as well. Before I let you go, Norbert, uh, give a shout out to your social medias. Tell people where they'll be able to see your video vlog that you've been recorded on your YouTube channel and uh, shout out anything else that you'd like to, man. Yeah. Firstly, thank you for having me on. Thank you for everything that you said. You know, I really appreciate it. And the way that you look at me, I, I really do appreciate it. It means a lot. And my socials is at magic, N-O-R-B-I, everywhere. Uh, and, you know, my YouTube is pretty good. Like, we've got proper, like, good, you know, camera people and everyone film and everything and uh my twitter is just full of philosophical views and my instagram is also pretty good so uh make sure make sure you check check it out check it out magic Nor norbert Norvindi jr bellator 291 andy manzolo is the opponent check it out saturday february 25th all the best to you norbert i'm looking forward to seeing your return thank you and we will speak to you again sometime down the line my man thank you very much thank you Thank you for watching this video on SevereMMA.com. For more wonderful content, please click the like, subscribe, and notification bell, and follow us on these social medias.